Hi, I'm Lelis Vernon, and I am the mother of two micropremi babies. Today I'm going to be talking to you about getting parents involved in quality improvement, the definition of what family center care is, how it's being done today in the U.S., and what are the barriers and next steps. I have no uh, conflicts to disclose. And my children, Charlie and Bobby, were born to twin to twin transfusion syndrome at 25 weeks of gestational age. They weighed one pound, 11 ounces each, and they pretty much had all the ABCs of neonatology. They stayed four months in the NICU, and during those four months, I learned a lot of things about faith, love, family, but most important, I became invested in finding new ways of partnering with the NICU team in order to improve the quality of care. I've been volunteering ever since. So what is patient and family-centered care? Patient and family-centered care is defined as patients, families, their representatives, and healthcare professionals working in active partnership at various levels across the healthcare system to improve health and healthcare. There are three important points to be made here. One is to realize that patient and family engagement is really a different way of thinking about the delivery of care. It's about being in active partnership. And the other thing to note is that the engagement happens at multiple levels of healthcare. So let's see what that is. Let's consider some examples of the three different tiers. At the level of direct care, we have rounding at the bedside, having the family in the NICU when rounds are being conducted, ideally by a multidisciplinary team, and making family participation unrestricted so the family can be with the patients at all times during the hospitalization. And shared decision means actively engaging parents in the decision-making processes, educating and helping parents in making choices about the care delivery. At the level of organization design and government, parent advisory councils are an outstanding way in which families can participate in making the NICU team determine how to structure and how to govern healthcare delivery. And finally, family participation at the policy-making level is done when patients and families have equal representation on unit and hospital committees that makes decisions about how to allocate resources to health programs. So why should you have patient and family-centered care culture in your NICU? Well, a lot of evidence has accumulated in the last decade to show the many benefits that such a culture change can bring to your NICU. Some of them are the improvement of quality, safety, and outcomes. There is no better historian to the baby than the parents sitting at the bedside. It ensures that patients receive care that fits with their preferences and values. There are few, fewer diagnosis tests ordered. It decreases healthcare costs. It increases patient buy-in to treatments. It improves patient satisfaction. And it also increases health professional satisfaction and, re and retention. So better quality, better outcomes, and lower costs. So what are the next steps when considering patient and family-centered care culture in your NICU? First, we need to overcome some of the barriers. The number one barrier that exists nowadays is competing organizational priorities, which in turn conflict with the interest of families engaged in partnerships in the NICU. Second is the variability in practice. Nowadays, if you take a look at units that have family integration in the, in the NICUs, you'll see that the concept of family-centered care can be very slippery, and so is its implementation. Lack of knowledge, and by that I mean both parts. When it comes to the NICU, NICU team, the NICU team needs to be trained on how to partner with those families coming to the table, and vice versa the parents need to have a clear understanding of what is expected to them, so their efforts and their energy to bring back better quality to the units is better utilized. And then there is the issue of perpetual volunteering and the sustainability of the efforts of the family. Most units would have a volunteer starting a family center care or parent advisory council in the unit, but that needs to translate into pay positions that then ensure the sustainability of such change in the culture of the NICU. And moving forward, standardizing family-centered care practice would ensure that there is always a place available for parents to come back to the table with the NICU team. 
and that in turn would translate into a national representation, which would form, therefore, a coalition of NICU families, regardless of their unit affiliation. And what about the concept of neonatal intensive parenting units, where parents are not just partners in care, but active care providers? And finally, tackling social media. In the past five years, this has been a topic of interest both for hospitals and families. So we need to better optimize this usage through regulation and guidelines so we better address the needs of the population we serve. So I hope you could take the few points about the concept of family-centered care, what is being done, and what are the next steps, and you take this back to your practice. Keep improving the quality of care we deliver for our babies. Thank you for your time.